Lifting Up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Well, first of all, we have to understand what the scriptures teach about the subject of dancing. Beginning in the Old Testament, the Hebrew infinitive lirkod, to dance, was used as a worship form. Much to the disapproval of King David's wife, the daughter of King Saul, Michel, um, David danced mightily in the spirit, and he was apparently stripped down to the ancient equivalent of underwear when he did it. She found this public display dishonoring to her, not so much to David or even to the Lord, but to her personally. And as a result, God struck her barren. The Lord accepted it as valid worship. She had been the daughter of a king. She had been the wife of a king, but she would now never be the mother of a king. Under God's judgment, the Lord approved of David's dancing in the spirit as a worship form. And so we see in the Exodus, when Mary, uh, that is Miriam in Hebrew, took the timbrel, the toth Miriam in Hebrew, and began dancing before the tribes of Israel, uh, the horse and rider thrown into the sea, leading the women and singing the song of Moses. Again, it was a biblically acceptable form of worship. In the New Testament, Jesus refers to it innocuously by way of analogy when he publicly rebukes the people who are ignoring his teaching and not following him as they should by saying or comparing it to someone who played a dirge but you would not dance and again he makes certain allusions back to the book of Isaiah so there is nothing in scripture that inherently forbids the practice of dancing per se nothing at all it's the way that dancing is done and the reason why it is done now, of course, in the world of seductive dancing, there is dancing that is sexually connotated, that is basically demonstrations of public lewdness and things like this. But dancing is a neutral thing. It can be done either way. I have seen Davidic dance that is well done quite tastefully and quite worshipfully, and I have no problem with it. Those who do have a problem, and it's called nomianism, a form of legalism where they confuse sanctification with holiness. What they're basically saying is because the world misuses dance, we shouldn't have dance at all. Well, in that case, get rid of your money. The world misuses money. In that case, get rid of your medication because the world misuses drugs. It's a false argument. It's an illogical argument, and it's an unscriptural argument. And frankly, it's a silly religious nonsense argument. There are Baptists who take that position, some fundamentalist Baptists, but you mentioned the Church of the Nazarene. The Church of the Nazarene had a rule book bigger than the scripture itself, that you can't take your children to the circus because the girls who ride the elephants wear skimpy costumes. The Church of the Nazarene, while Methodist in origin or Wesleyan Armenian in origin, always confused holiness with sanctification. What happens is when you do that, when you begin defining sanctification on the basis of keeping extra biblical rules as the Church of the Nazarene did, the devil gets in the back door because he's diverted your attention with religiosity and legalism. The Church of the Nazarene is a classic example. I know Michael Christensen from New York. He was a leading figure in the Church of the Nazarene, did his doctorate in, in Yale University in theology, and he was gone into theological liberalism. It, it, it was unbelievable what he's done. Dr. Kent from the Nazarene headquarters in Kansas City signed evangelicals and Catholics together. So you have Nazarene missionaries in Catholic countries converting Catholics, and you have the leader of the, a leader of the Church of the Nazarene signing on behalf of that denomination, accepting that Roman Catholics are Christians and shouldn't be evangelized. The Church of the Nazarene is in decline theologically and spiritually, and I would argue even ethically and morally in some quarters. It is infiltrated with theological liberalism. 
And the way that the devil bushwhacked them, hoodwinked them, was to get them to focus on legalism and confusing legalism with holiness. This is the Church of the Nazarene. They had Dr. Kent signed evangelicals and Catholics together. They have bigger problems than dancing or the girls riding the elephants in the circuses wearing skimpy costumes. The whole thing is silly. Now, obviously, Christians should refrain from pu public displays of promiscuity, things that you'd see in, in, in the disco phenomenon of the 1970s and things like this, where the dance steps were often sexually connotated, simply uh, public promiscuity, sexually charged dancing, things that should not be demonstrated in any kind of public way by Christians, should be something, should be simply the obviously the reserve of the marriage chamber and not outside of that. This is clear. We avoid the world's interpretation of dancing when it is uh, of a promiscuous nature. But to say there's something wrong with dancing in and of itself and the church should forbid it is complete religious nonsense. It has no scriptural foundation whatsoever. It is a diversion. Legalism, legalism, nomianism are not holiness. Walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Biblical rule keeping will avail nothing, we're told in Romans. My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you so much. God bless.